Check, check, check. Shout out to everybody here in the live. Thank you for jumping on in. Appreciate each and every one of you for being here, sharing your most precious asset with me. That is your time. Welcome to the Crypto Lifer Show, baby. As we start this beautiful journey every single morning, and you are blessed to be here. I am blessed to be here with you. May God bless each and every one of you. Put in the lemon into the water. Let's begin the beautiful journey as we start our day every single day. Putting the lemon into the water, as you can see. Did you work out today? I did. I was sweating, still grinding. My neck barely fits in my shirt because it's getting so big. Big neck. Ah, the trap's getting big, expanding the blood flow, getting vascular. Shout out to all my lovers alive. Shout out to everybody here on the live. I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. I really do. Uh, gratitude is the attitude every single day to create abundance in my life. And I'm grateful to be here all the time. Let's take a big sip of the lemon water. I just took some oil of oregano, cleaning out my system, getting myself good to go. Shout out to you all for being here. Let's talk about CPI data and let's break it down like we do every single day. May God bless you all. So we're going to take a look here at CPI data and it was good, you know, bullish. I mean, things are going up, like things are going up. But after increasing 0.4% in April, things only increased 0.1% in May. So overall, they're still increasing, which is funny. But they increased less in May than they did in April, suggesting that the Fed has done their job, right? Another cool thing is this is huge news. About to show you some huge news. CME Watch to was bounced to 94% that there will be no rate hike. Um, the fact that we had bullish uh, CPI data also leads in to the Fed meeting and the rate hike. So 94% ga- that we won't have a rate hike now, that's very bullish for the markets. That's very bullish for the S&P. Everyone's trying to say that the S&P has left its longest bear market in a long time. S&P back above certain highs. The NASDAQ getting a beautiful pump to the upside but got sold off nastily, um, which is pretty interesting um, since this morning. But a nice pump to the upside. If you had held that trade, you would have been in the money on the morning NASDAQ and Q futures. Um, so 94% gains here. For uh, 94%, uh, uh, you know, it looks like a candle to me, right? And whenever I see a big thing like that, it's a candle to me. But 94% that we won't get a rate hike tomorrow. Big news. We're kind of honing on in on what's happening. We know the news before the news based on what's happening in the charts and what's going on. So shout out to everybody here. I hope you're excited and getting ready to learn. And we're going to break down our favorite asset in the world, Biddy, Biddy Bitcoin. Shout out to everybody here on the live. Appreciate each and every one of you for being here. So... The volatility still exists. They're going to use every single moment they have to create volatility. Um, if you were with me, I called the double bottom last night or maybe in the afternoon like this for a pump to the upside. I had the measured move, which was the, the base of this, and bang. We hit that measured move to a T on this wick to the upside, which is interesting. What I want to see is some consolidation now. See how we came down on the wick? I'm just projecting this wick this morning. I'd like to see the 15-minute get a bounce back to the upside and for Bitcoin to consolidate in this triangle that I'm projecting. Again, this is a very loose projection. I just threw it up there with only one touch on either trend. But I've seen these types of things play out before, so we're going to watch to see if we can hold the zone. We don't want to break back inside this pattern. That's not going to be a good look for Bitcoin. So first thing we're going to do is what we do every single day. I'm going to delete all my old work. All right, But I did hit our trade last night. If you were in trading with me, we nailed The futures trade, 17% gains on 14x leverage. It was a beautiful, beautiful trade. No stop loss got hit in the making of that trade as well. I'm going to remove my moving averages, and we're going to get to the weekly candle. First thing, I do want to look at the weekly and see how we're doing against the 200 SMA. That's the first thing that we'll look at, and then we'll move on from there. So, you know, we're battling to try to get back above this level. You can see we have an indecision doji candle right now, which is up and down, but we still got these double wicks. Double wicks usually propels us back to the upside. Only time will tell. We have sellers just completely falling off, right? Lack of sellers. Who's left to sell? Short, 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 short. Everyone's been short. You have stop losses everywhere. They're hoping for more downside. But when you have slow consolidative downside, you stack shorts fast, fast. You know, you stack shorts slowly, slowly, slowly. And eventually, everyone is short. The whole market is short, um, which is weird to me. Why you'll be short with bullish CPI data and with the Fed not raising rates. But people want to remain in in their zone, right? So... We're going to remove these moving averages for a second, and we're just going to talk like we do every single day. There might be someone new on the channel, so if you haven't seen this, I've gone over this every day since we've been up in this zone. So here's the deal. Our first layer, sorry, I like to use uh, Alt-J. So our first layer here is 24,274, 24,300 area. That's going to be the weekly support. Uh, A lot of people don't want to talk about the weekly support, but that is what it is. You know what I mean? Oh, this is a new little line here. 
oh yeah you could put an alert on there now i get it they're gonna just ah that's pretty cool they've changed the alerts so now you can kind of see it they didn't add that that's new i like that it's kind of cool so here's the deal um if bitcoin comes back down and bounces off this area that's going to be your big weekly support all right one thing i'm also looking at is the neckline of this head and shoulder pattern we want to get back above this neckline too this is a level that we want to basically break back above if we if we can possibly do that so one thing that is going to be a, re- a bit of resistance when we get to that that area let's see what that resistance would be sorry i flipped it up quickly it didn't didn't stick on it it's going to be somewhere when we get back to it about 29,050, 29k all right so here's our first line right and then we have our beautiful bottom and uh we bottomed it at about 15,400 I guess let's see what that candle says exactly because that you know 15,476 15,005 was our bottom for Bitcoin all right so beautiful beautiful things to be and then we have this support and resistance flip here that we wick to the CME gap so here's our resistance here's our bounce back to the upside off the zone and I'm uh, just kind of I like telling the story I like going over the ideas here and then what's interesting is we had wicks in this area. We had wicks here. So you can see we wicked down, we wicked up, and this was a previous support that became resistance. This is going to be our big boy resistance to get back above is 31,198. A lot of people are still short from there. You have to remember that with stop losses up in here somewhere. Believing they can hold on for a long time. Smart move would probably to take some profits at one point when you come back to a support zone, like when you came back to this support or even wick near it. But you got people that stay in their convictions. They can't get out of them. That's what propels the market is all these stop losses all over the place that could help us move further to the upside or to the downside, all right? So this is like the big levels to watch. And then we know we have this level here. And when we bring it in closely and we look at the VRVP, you can see that we're dabbling with this huge level of liquidity, which is really good support. I mean, there's a lot of buys in there. A lot of people would buy Bitcoin at 25,000. That's when a lot of people loaded up and got ready in that area. Uh, Losing 26,000 right now, though, for Bitcoin at 25,995. Right, and there's really no rhyme or reason. Too many people on either side of the of the fence, and they're just going to go after them no matter what. We're going to bring you book map too as well. And remember, just trading and CPI data days are just they're they're, they're rough. They're very rough. Um, you know, just be careful with that idea because um, you just they use it even if they're even if it doesn't if it's not logical. They use it to keep people kind of on their edge, and once people are on their edge, they can move the market any way they want. So that's just one thing you got to stay privy to. You got to kind of pay attention to. That's why, like, the edge for me is slightly shaved away during these times due to the CPI data, right? So this is the weekly chart. Just so you know, we're looking at the weekly chart. And you can see once we get above this high volume node, it's smooth sailing to this node. Once we get through this node, it's smooth sailing up to 47,000. So um, easy pickings if we can get back above these levels. And I'm bullish for Bitcoin, and I'll tell you why. And we're going to keep continuing to say this, um, right? And I'll change my tune at one point. I do want to see the weekly candle get back above the 200 SMA. This is going to be like my line in the sand. We don't want to get rejected here. We want to get back above this yellow line. Boom. Once we get back above this yellow line, I mean, you can't tell me that we're not going up to probably 35, maybe even 38,000. So there's a lot riding on this 200 SMA here on the weekly time frame. We got to get back above that simple moving average. That's a simple. That's why we call it an SMA, a smooth moving average, a simple moving average. It is not exponential. What's the difference between an exponential and a simple moving average? Well, I'll tell you, say you had a nine-day smooth moving average. It would take the end of the daily closes at the end of each nine days, and it would divide it by nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? And that would be a smooth moving average. The other one would take the ending results by nine, and it would take these and put more weight on the further end days than the latter end days, and that's an exponential moving average. Exponential just puts more weight on the days that are closer to the present time than a smooth moving average. That's all. Take deep breaths. You got this. You're going to be able to do this. You're going to be able to find your way. You're going to become a trader. I'm telling you right now, if you want it, it's yours to have. But you got to want it more than everybody else in the game. So I could see a measured move up to 37,800. That's the measured move out of this flag to the upside. Again, bearing certain things, I will switch short if we keep closing candles below the 200 SMA on the weekly. But for now, this is a falling wedge. Falling wedges break up 68% of the time. So you got to assume based on probability of technical analysis, that this falling wedge will break to the upside. Shout out to the 434 beautiful souls in the live, 138 likes. May we get the likes up to the watchers. I would greatly appreciate it. Bay, bay, let's go. Let's stay motivated every single day of your life. Did you work out today? If you just had surgery, something happened, did you at least do some small movements? Did you do something to keep your blood flowing? You know, you got to even go for a walk if you can. I try to go for a, I do go for a walk 
I aim to go for a walk every single day. Uh, at least if it's a 45 minute walk with my family, we walk around the neighborhood, we do something. We got to get the feet moving. We got to get the blood going. I work out every morning, but then I also like to take a family walk if I can. It's just good. Walks are beautiful for you. All you got to do is walk every day. That's almost, you know, and, and throw a workout in there, and you're going to do pretty good for yourself. Make sure you're walking, taking a break from the screen. You can't sit there for hours and hours and hours without taking a walk. You can't sit there all night and not get a good night's sleep. All right? I don't care how good the markets are. I don't care how good the trade is. You got to walk away and take care of the mind, body, and soul. Everything else will fall through. Um, if you do com- sleepless nights after sleepless nights, and you may be making money, but eventually you're going to beat up your body. And the key is money isn't everything. Your body is number one. Then your mind, well, your mind, your body, your spirit, and your money. These four things do help, you know, have, have stress or less stress to your life. You want to be basically kind of balance them if you can in, in a pretty nice way. So that's all I'm saying. Um, and that's what we do at this channel. We go for the four pillars of wealth. We really do. The money, make sure you have financial freedom so you don't have someone telling you what to do and you can go where you want. You can meet who you want. You can golf when you want, right? If your friend calls you up, hey, you want to come to the to the course today, you could say, you know what? I could switch this around. I'd love to come on out. You know, if you want to go to dinner with someone, if you want to do something, if you want to fly to Florida because you want to see someone in Florida, if you want to go meet someone, if you want to do a business deal, you can go anywhere you want at any given moment in time. You have your own discipline and your set schedule, but it's beautiful not to have a boss to ask, hey, can I take some time off? Can I go here? Right? So financial is important so you can feel free. Number one. Number two, you want to be able to work out every day. You want to look good. When you go to the beach and take your shirt off, you want to impress yourself. You want people to say, wow, that guy's old, but he's still looking good if you're in my age, 40 years old. You don't want to be slumping off, falling off, drinking beer, getting the beer belly, thinking it's okay to get that that bread gut and just, you know what I mean? Why everyone thinks it's okay to get bread gut and just, you know, it's like, it's like, it seems to be the running case. It's okay to have a belly by the time you're 40 to 50 years old. I'm not, that's not okay with me. You got to keep it moving. There's 70 year old men that are still in shape, just doing their thing, eating right, handling their business and getting it in. I want to be 70 years old like Jack LaLanne swimming with boats attached to me. I want to eat seven raw vegetables a day and just basically just just kill it. You know what I mean? And uh, Or just take, not kill it. I shouldn't say kill it. It's like kind of a, but to take your life by storm. Then you also want to have your spirit ready. Do you pray every day? Do you have a good connection with God? Do you believe everyone else is a beautiful piece of God? And if everyone's a beautiful piece of God, why would you talk down to somebody? Why would you hurt someone's feelings? You know what I mean? And that actually helps you treat yourself better when you treat other people better. And then the mind, make sure the mind is, is, and for me, the mind, it all follows with the working out. As long as I work out, my mind is sharp. My mind is ready to go. So the four pillars of life, super important that we're, we're going after each and every one of them. I remember in my life where I had my money a little bit, but it didn't really work out that well. And I was all messed up in the head, right? And I couldn't, and I didn't, and I, and I had to work for someone else. So I didn't have all these things figured out. I'm slowly getting them figured out. Trading in, in cryptocurrency helped me break away from the rat race. Also investing too. I made money before I even got into cryptocurrency. That's the one thing I, no one really realizes. I started trading 15 years ago. I'm not saying I was day trading and swing trading, um, but what I was doing, I was buying and selling coins and you know uh, assets, and I was getting into things, holding them for two to three days, swing trading them. Um, swing trading really, I would call it like a 10 day swing trade if you call it a swing trade, you know. And then I invested in Canopy Grow Corp, which changed my life. I invested in Great Panther Limited, which changed my life. Uh, it was a, a silver mining stock, and then I threw those gains into Canopy Grow Corp, and then I found Bitcoin, 500, started researching it at $350. Knew what it was at 350 bucks, if you can believe it, but n- had no idea what it was really going to become until I did my full research. A year later, I realized the halving was coming, and the rest is history, uh, and now here I am, right? So it can happen to you if you believe in yourself. I always believed something big was going to happen to me. I never gave up, no matter what. So this beautiful falling wedge, back to Bitcoin. But I just had to kind of reiterate what we're going after here on the channel, what this channel is for. It's for technical analysis, but it's also for self-preservation. It's also to push yourself to the limit. It's And that's why I show up every single day consistently. This is show number 901 on our way to 1,000 shows. When we hit 1,000 shows, it's going to be a huge milestone. On our way to 50,000 subscribers, I love each and every one of you. God bless all here in the live stream. We're not old lifer. I'm 44. Don't call us old, please. I'm 40 years old, man. 40 is not old because I'm 39 next month and young as a puppy. The secret is to let your inner fire burn slower. The sun can burn itself up. So does the human system. Shout out to Creators Crypto. I walked the pups for an hour from 6 a.m. to 7. Just had a good breakfast and now with y'all. I like that. I like that. Walking the pups, man. The dog keeps you outside, keeps you going. They got to get out. You got to get out.
Y'all then fired up the machines until dark. LOL. Pop in for the Mech C trade. Shout out to my man James Armstrong, Jim Borg 66, my man. Coming through. Uh, walk in the Foster Germans. Wow. Hey, guys, love the show. How we look at just tuned in. We up or down for the New York markets. We're going to break it down for you. Don't worry. Take a deep breath. We look at Bitcoin here, though, first. We already looked at NASDAQ. They're up and then back down again. NASDAQ is kind of New York market. So NASDAQ had a nice pump, but came back to the downside. Interesting enough, we already went through CPI data, which was, you know, positive. All right. And we can go through all the different things. I mean, food at home is rising, right? Uh, It's up 4% in 12 months. I mean, that's a lot of money. And it's actually, I feel like it's up more than that. Food at home, 6.7%. Food and food, no, 5.8%. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Energy, food away from home is up even more, 8.3%, right? So when you eat out, it's hurting you even worse than it used to. Energy down, which is a good sign. Energy down, you know, gasoline. That's really what saved the CPI data. Food was up, but gasoline was down, right? But you have to remember, gasoline was overly inflated at one point. And so, it, it you know, it's like, you know, shelters up 8%, transportation up 10%, medical care services down 0.1%, and apparel up 3.5%. Anything that you need is up on the year. I mean, it's not amazing, right? But they're they're acting like it is. So here's our weekly chart, all right? 10-day chart also, which was the scary chart, is pointing to the downside, but could easily loop back up. We could go more sideways. So the 10-day chart does have a MACD cross, but I don't trust the MACD at all, at all. Uh, I trust the stochastic support and resistance in my patterns. I use the MACD for visualization of markets or, or, or volume. I want to see kind of what the volume's doing. That's what I use the the uh, the MACD for. Let's take a look at my three day chart, which is my go to. You got to have a few go to charts that you trust more than other charts. And this is my three day. My three day rises the resistance up to right where we're at. Like we're right at three day support. You know, I just want to remind you that the weekly does go a little lower, so you kind of have to keep that in the back of your head if if possible. Let's look at our MACD, which wants to turn to the upside. Falling volume with falling price. The sellers are just gone. The volume is so low. We're losing the sellers. Want to see that retail jump back in. Want to see more people jump back into the markets. All right. This is also getting flatter and flatter. Soon to be on a bit of a decline here as we have a a beautiful, more sharp uptrend. That is a Class C hidden bullish divergence. It's not the strongest. It's the weakest of hidden bullish, but it is a hidden bullish divergence. I've been saying that for days now. The stochastics are showing a shoulder a head and a right shoulder here at the base point. If we, you know, look at this, I mean, you can see it. It's a sho- It's an inverted head and shoulder pointing to the upside. Three-day chart looks very bullish to me, wanting to defend the lows of this channel. And this channel has been holding so nicely, this falling wedge. I have played a falling wedge. It must be a thousand times in my life or more. So it's a comfortable pattern that I like to see. It's more likely we break to the upside than to the downside. And the three-day chart looks absolutely amazing. Um, the daily also slowly kind of capitulating now, or you know, not capitulating, but slowly falling to the downside. And we have lack of bearish momentum here too. That hill is very small compared to the last three hills. The bears just don't seem to have the steam they had before. They can't seem to crush us back down. And you have to remember, there's a lot of people that were told when we were here, we were going to 10K. When we were here, we were going to 10K. So they didn't buy 16,000. Then we went up to this area here at 23. They were freaking out. Then people said, it's a false move. We had that guy Capo on Twitter. Short, I'm short, I'm short, I'm short. I mean, how long is he going to continue to stay short? And again, I don't want, you know, I'm just, I love everybody in the space. But, you know, people, what what I don't like is people think you can't, you know, if someone says you're short the whole time and then you're wrong, I mean, we should bring it up, right? If I say I'm short for weeks on end and nobody calls me out on Twitter, nobody calls me out, everyone just lets me kind of continue to run. And I think it's kind of, it's kind of crazy, you know? And I honestly, I say, I don't know where price is going. I know nothing but the fact of my own ignorance. I say that all the time on my channel. And I tell people that make these bold predictions, just, just, just say you don't know what's going on. Just say you don't know where Bitcoin's going to go. It frees you. It's like, ah, oh, I don't have to know where Bitcoin's going to go. The charts will tell me where Bitcoin's going. That can be confusing for people. Like, you're an analyst, Sam. You're on, you're on YouTube every single day, and you make all these calls. But then you say you know nothing but the fact of your own ignorance? Yes. Because I'm not going to evolve my emotions, what I think, what I feel, and what I believe into the charts. It's going to be what I see in the charts, and that's it strictly. Nothing else, nothing more, all right? Shout out to the 520 beautiful people on the live. Let's get the likes up to the watchers. 192 likes. Let's get the likes all the way up. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Woo. I refuse to be a sheep. I refuse to be regular. I refuse to be a normie. Let's continue to move. Shout out to the no corners. I hope we can turn you into coiners. If you're out there, if you're watching, 
We love you. We want to show you the way through cryptocurrency. Let's get it in. MDR, so, so much manipulation. Um, adding to his margin. I must be a lifer. I'm watching from an all-exclusive resort. Shout out to Zachary Dow. Sounds beautiful, man. Sounds beautiful. Let's go. Alpha Scream, baby. My man, shout out to Creators Crypto. Shout out to West Salvador. Shout out to Lifer Fred in the house. Shout out to David B333. Shout out to James Armstrong, Jim Board 66. Shout out to Zcash, James Wozniak, Tug Marley. Wow, so many beautiful. Elton Jeffs, You Grow, I Grow. Wow, Dead Game Boxing, Terpene Hunter, I Dope, Dennis Kuva. A lot of amazing people here on the stream. Hassan Haj, my man. Jennifer Mofit, we love you, Jennifer. Thank you for coming on in. Jay Bella, jumping on in. Lakochi Coker and all the beautiful lifers, Lifer Adam and more. Shout out to everybody here on the live. We appreciate you all more than you would ever know. And we have gratitude for your life. Thank you so much for the love. We appreciate it. All right. So moving forward, we bouncing off this low value area. The daily also slowly could have more downside, but slowly starting to show signs of life here. Uh, the 22 hour also coming back down without losing a lot. That's a good sign. And we could come up and come down one more time. We could come all the way up to the top of the channel, come back down. And one thing to say is whenever you're in the bottom of a channel, you're likely to hit the top of the channel. Clear as day. And now, look, this is something I didn't see before. But we got a falling wedge now. We broke out two times, but that's a falling wedge inside of the falling wedge that wants to break to the upside, too. So you got two falling wedges now that want to make the move. Similar to this falling wedge that slowly made its way up. And, you know, even if we just get back to this next resistance point, we're going to have some resistance right here. You can see that because we tapped it, had some issues right there. We almost wicked on it right there at 26,800. And the 800s. Oh, no, that's 28,000. Sorry, 28,000. 600 um even a little lower if we kind of bring the wick now nah, but i like to keep it right around there and we have a wick up to 29 so but 28,006 is going to be another area that we'll have a little issue for but just want to point this out we also have another falling wedge falling wedges break up 68 percent of the time just remember that keep it simple i can't tell you how many times i had 100 indicators on looking at five different things and then i just missed an easy play out of a out of a falling wedge that i should have just stepped back looked at the simple idea and again, I talk about this with everyone here for Bitcoin. Everyone said we were going to 100K, 100,000, 100,000. But we know rising wedges, just like falling wedges, if you were to break this up to the, if you were to flip this upside down, a falling wedge breaks to the upside, right? Just like I'm talking. And that, what did it do? It broke up. But a rising wedge breaks to the downside. On top of that, if you just looked at Bitcoin here, you had a shoulder, you had a head, and you had a right shoulder. That's a move to the downside. I mean, that's just what happened. So rising wedges and head and shoulder patterns right there told you there was bearish confluence right there that we were going to drop to the downside. It even gave you the measured move, which is insane, because if you took the head and shoulder, and look, no indicators needed. You didn't even need volume and price. You needed nothing else but the shape. And I've seen this many times. I've back-tested these theories so many times in my life. How do you find the measured move of a head and shoulder? You take the length of the neckline to the head, then you swing it to the neckline. I mean, that's exactly where we went on a low. Pretty interesting to me. So I keep it simple. But I do add other things and I add like, you know, I build what's called bullish or bearish confluence based on uh, my indicators and what I'm seeing. But I also keep it simple. Falling wedge inside, falling wedge here. Start to kind of tell us a bit of a story here. So 22 hour on the daily don't look amazing. There could be more downside. But for the most part, they're starting to kind of slide left, right? Then we flow into the four hour time frame. Four hour time frame for, you know, only, only thing is kind of my worrisome here. Not worrisome, but I'm concerned more about it because... Our stokes are getting high. But I've seen big moves come out of the stokes, but we did cross the dotted line. I would have liked to see more of a push to the upside. You can see we're still below this resistance here. All right, so let's talk about this idea. We had a double bottom on the line, and we're battling this line. We have to get back above this line to remain bullish for sure. Um, and Bitcoin's in a rising wedge. We know rising wedges break down 68% of the time, and that's got a bear flag right there. So another thing that I do, is no matter how bullish I am on bigger time frames, I still watch to make sure the smaller time frames can break us out of the zone. If we can't get a daily or a four-hour candle close above 26,200, we're going to be in trouble, all right? Or right? We're actually not going to be in trouble. We're going to be able to short the market or go sideways. But I want to see Bitcoin get back above and close in this range. Uh, what I am looking for is a measured move uh, or is a move back to the top of the channel. See, bottom, top, bottom, you're likely to come to the top of the channel here, hit that point of control at 26,895. And that, that's kind of the area that we're looking for, for Bitcoin. Shout out to everybody here. If you're new to the channel, know that I have a awesome trading group. You can join the trading group any day you want. 
We have people tra- tra- trading NQ futures. We have people trading Bitcoin. We have people doing scalps on smaller leverage or bigger leverage. We have so much to teach you. I have my own, you know, special sauce. I have elite traders that are posting charts. Every single day we find gains in the market no matter what. Whether it's me, whether it's my elite, it does not matter. And you're going to learn so much being around people that are just highly, highly motivated to keep it pushing and finding gains in the charts no matter what. You can join my free server right off the bat, right? And in my free server, you're going to have access to the gains, my watch list. You're going to find out what you get if you join the training group, number one. Free guides to help you learn how to trade, lifer links, and gains on gains. And then read the testimonials. So many testimonials. My best money ever so far. I jumped into Lena, but still saw gains coming. Thanks to all I've learned from Sam. Thank you, Sam. 68% gains yesterday. This guy made on 20%, 20x leverage. And again, don't trade leverage unless you know how to trade spot. I didn't even touch leverage until I traded for like 10 years, 12 years. All right. Leverage is more treacherous. It kind of stirs up the pot. Then you get Bitcoin updates every single morning. You get Bitcoin updates every single night before I go to bed um, and throughout the day. So stay tuned for more. We hit a Bitcoin trade right there. There's my Bitcoin trade yesterday for 17% gains from 25,771 to 26,91. Sold the local top as well. Teaching you how to do the dance. 11.54 p.m., another update, and then another one this morning. Continuing to keep you ready to go, showing you what's happening in the market. So get on into the trading group. I'm telling you right now, it's the greatest place to be. It makes people happy. They feel good. We, we wake up with gratitude and smart and just abundant attitude every single day. So many awesome people that I've attracted into my life that have come into the trading group. No lamos, nobody complaining, nobody whining. The second someone does that in the trading group, it's like everyone can see like, well, that's that all about. Like we don't keep negative Nancy's around. We keep it positive every single day. So if you're feeling down, If you need a motivator, if you need to get moving, if you want someone to wake you up every single day in gratitude with the attitude of life, love, and the pursuit of happiness, then jump on into the trading group as soon as you can. Um, Sam, check the Bitcoin 5-minute chart. I think the bounce is coming. Shout out to Dave Van Beaten, my man. Appreciate you all for being here. Ada Short is printing. I love the group. It's so good. So many coins that you don't even think about come into your notice. That's another thing. I'm scanning the markets. I found the top five layer ones that could possibly have a huge gain. And I sat there for hours and hours researching so many coins. You would want to know what they are. I would love to tell you, but I just can't. You got to jump into the trading group. So I got so much information for you. I'm making spreadsheets. I, and that's another thing. Not only am I just going over technical analysis, because some, some people are just signals group. We're not a signals group. We teach you how to find your own signals. We teach you how to grind. We teach you how to find the moves. But what we also do, I make a lot of money finding markets before other, everyone else and building positions in those markets you know, one coin I'll be nice enough to teach you about is Casper. That's got really fast tech. It's got, you know, ZK roll up inside. It's got a lot going for it. It can do transactions very, very fast. The thing is hot. And it's it's kind of a little known coin, even though for me, it's a known coin. And I've been building a bag in Casper. $4,000 worth of Casper. I want to get it to $10,000. And then when I get it up there, it's going to just, I'm just going to be like, wow. And then when Casper does it 50 to 60 to maybe even 100x, that money is going to turn into some serious money. So, that's how you turn four hundred grand, four thousand into two hundred thousand dollars. And I've done these things many times. Cardano turned thirty six hundred into five hundred grand, if you can believe it. So remember, stick to your positions. I stick to my convictions. I research, research, research. That's another thing I do. I'm heavily researching coins every single day. I'm spending three to four, sometimes five hours a day researching, on top of five hours a day doing technical analysis and another two hours helping people going over the charts. So stay tuned. The trading group will blow your mind. There's so much going on in there. I'm excited to be I'm excited to be a part of it. Like I'm blessed that I get to be in that trading group. So the four hour time frame is just crossing the dotted line. I've seen a double top. Anything could happen here, but the market structure doesn't look amazing. That's definitely a rising wedge. Rising wedges break down 68% of the time. So as bullish as we see on the smaller time frames, um, right now the four hour is taking over and we we we're at a resistance, right? Short resistance, long support. That was a clear resistance as we bounced, bounced. Bounced three times off the zone, and now we couldn't get back above the area. So we need a four-hour or a daily candle to close above 26,000, even 200, yeah, 300, 350, 200, really, that area. We got to get back above the zone. That lets us know that we could start to continue to move to the upside. We go to the one-hour time frame as we continue to look small, and the one-hour time frame also wanting to push us to the downside right now. Doesn't make sense because CPI data was good, but we're not moving with the rest of the market. We have our own woes here for Bitcoin. Um, and we're kind of, you know, we're going after the, the SEC. Bitcoin doesn't have a problem. But the overall market sentiment 
is a little lower than normal. We'll take a look at our fear and greed index, too. That's something that you want to add to the pile. And it's at 45. Fear actually getting closer and closer to the shaded region. Um, lower than it was last, as low as it was last week at 44. I've used this indicator. I'm telling you, when we get into the shaded area, I'm forced to buy like five to $10,000 worth of Bitcoin. Like I always nibble. You can see I'm always buying 1,500 bits of Bitcoin, but this is when I really begin to load up in these areas. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Casper or Caspa? I, I actually invest in both, but Caspa. I'm not, you know, I don't use a Boston accent on the channel. When I say Caspa, I mean Caspa. When I say Casper, I'm going to say R, Casper. So, Napster, see what he said? Napster, funny. Caspa, master, you know what I mean? I don't use a Boston accent on the group. The trading group is so much more than trading school. We support each other, uplift each other. There might not be signals, but there's trades in there that are highly accurate. Hint, hint, so funny, right? Um, my rent just went up 30%. I talked them down to 15. How could they raise the rent that fast on you out of nowhere? That's insane. That's insane. That's another reason to own where you live if you can. You know what I mean? And they, you're the only one that can raise the rent on yourself and own some property so people are paying you rent. All right? That's the key, too, of this trading group. I'm going to show you how I build a real estate company for my first ever real estate uh, you know, acquisitions to, as I continue to grow. I'm going to talk about the woes of the tenants. I'm going to talk about what we had to do to renovate. I'm going to put this all on my other Sam Price channel. Follow me at Sam Price on the new channel. Big day. You know, and our first interview is going to be coming out on that on that uh, later on. So get excited. Uh, get excited for that. And I just want to get the link to the channel for you. And here it is. Bang. Here's the Sam Price channel. I want to get to 500 subscribers. Help me get to 500 subscribers for my first video ever. Once we get to 500, link here in the description or the comment section here. I like to put things in the comments right here. Look, if you want to join the trading group, you're not sure how to do it. We have a pinned comment. You can click right there and join the Discord immediately. Or you can hit MaxC and join MaxC. Both of them are places that you're going to benefit from. MaxC has zero spot maker and taker fees. That's the place to be for me personally. I don't want to uh, waste my money dollar cost averaging into the best coins in the game like Caspa. 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 Pa, pa, pa. Not per, per, per. One's with a K, one's with a C. I do invest in both, which is interesting. It's a, just a coincidence of times. But look, zero spot maker and taker fees, zero future limit order. So if you make a limit order, that's the difference between a maker and a taker. A taker is a market order. A maker is a limit order. And only 0.1% fees. I mean, you can't beat this anywhere else in the game. It's got the lowest fees. For spot, dollar cost averaging, you can't beat Max Global. So I would highly suggest opening up a Max Global today. Even if you're just a DCA person and you don't want to trade and you're like, I'm not into trading. I just like to add to my bags. Best place to add to your bags. You can also get it off on a, onto a hot wallet immediately. It works very well. Their withdrawals are fast and furious. They just pay well. They do the right thing. Um, Max C, man. You got to love Max C. They do the right thing. They take care of their people. So rising wedges break down 68% of the time. You're starting to form a rising wedge. Also a bear flag. I got to put it out there. That is a bear flag. However, we did break out of the falling wedge, right? That's our kind of, so we got bullish and bearish confluence. We're going at each other, seeing which one, and we begin to build a story here. So right off the bat, we have some support too, which we've noticed because we had a bounce here. Why was I so more bullish? I'm going to show you the eight day chart. I mean, the eight hour chart. We're going to talk about that in a second on another, on another time frame, on another chart, just to make it clean and clear. 15 minute wants to get a bit of a bounce back to the upside. So we're looking for this falling wedge, very sharp falling wedge. To give us a bit of a bounce back to the top of the channel, we're very oversold. And now we look at Bookmap. Bookmap is a beautiful heat map that shows you where the orders are for Bitcoin on Bybit, uh, OKX, Binance Futures. It shows us where the liquidity lies, okay? So looking at this closely, you can see we have a big buy order at 25.7. It's like the biggest thing on the charts, but we have these two sell orders at 26, 26.7, 26, and that's 620. These are how many Bitcoins are on the order book. And they, they don't have to be whales. They could be retail in with the whales they could be whales in with the retail it's all together right and right now but uh at the end of the day most of it is whales right so whenever i see an order this close to price action like this usually tells me to be wary of shorting the market we're likely to pumble into these into these areas fill these liquidity zones and whoever's in between gets squeezed short squeeze so i'd be looking out for a possible short squeeze for bitcoin all the way up to about 26,600 26,500 that would get us above that support zone 
that I keep mentioning that we must break back above because it was a previous resistance and we're battling it right now. So can the 15 minute save the day and get a move to the upside? That's the question. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the 15 minute to save the day. Um, that was weird. I guess you could make that log rhythmic or analog. If you ever get an oscillator that's acted funky, double click the sidebar of it and it will reset it nicely for you so you don't have to go like scrolling all around and figuring it out. RSI is coming down. MACD is pointing down. Stochastics RSI are down. You would expect a bounce here off the channel. Also, if we take swing low to swing low, that's an uptrend. That's a downtrend. That is hidden bullish divergence, which tells us that the trend should continue to the upside. We should make a high higher than the high to the upside. Let's look at our seven-minute chart as well. Um, and wow, we just got a massive super chat for $200. Unbelievable. Um, a $200 super chat. Let me wait for the balls to go into the jar. Um, let's see. I, it's, I think it's slightly delayed um, through the API. So we'll see. Where is that super chat? Come on in. Um, but wow. I can't wait to celebrate when the balls hit the jar. Thank you so much for the love. That's a huge super chat. $200 super chat in the game. God bless you. That knock life. And um, I can't wait to see what's going down. Um, there it is. Here it comes. Boom. And let's see those balls hit the jar. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Where are my dad's tied to? Boom. Explosive. Look at that. Some of them fell out. Oh, I got to go find them on the ground here. Some of them fell out. Sam, I've watched you since 2021. Thank you for being you, brother. Wanted to send some love to you. I haven't been on YouTube or Trading View lately because I found Jesus day one on Dex Tools eight weeks ago. God bless you, friend, and blessings to you and your family. Shout out to that knock life, man. God bless you. And it's funny, that's a play on words. I found Jesus, right? But um, thank you so much for the $200 super chat. That's the nicest thing you could do for me. Very, very blessed, man. God bless, friend, and blessings to you and your family watching me since 2001 that's two years straight and still with me and you can see that's where the love is um people that have watched me for a long time have nothing but beautiful things to say uh shout out to everybody here god bless you all for jumping on into the live and we love you more than you would ever know falling wedge in the seven minute time frame all right wants to bounce to the upside here okay and but yeah it doesn't look amazing on the seven i'll be honest but I am, you know, I'm expecting a bit of a bounce, just a little bounce, nothing crazy, just a little bounce. The seven and the 15 minute do show signs of life. And we do have a hidden bullish divergence either on the seven. I mean, from the low swing to the high swing, that's an uptrend. We do the same thing from this swing low to that swing low. It's a downtrend. 15 minute and the one hour is showing hidden bullish divergence. That tells us the trend should continue to the upside. We should get a bounce and break these highs. So I'm, I'm calling for a long here for Bitcoin. All right. And I could be wrong 100%. You never know. Just because these are just probabilities. I'm going by what I what I see. But I do see a bounce for Bitcoin. I believe if we go through the live stream an hour from now, we should see a bounce for Bitcoin. So I went over the weekly for you. I went over the three-day chart. I went over the daily. I went over the four-hour. I went over the one-hour. I went over the 15. And I went over the seven-minute time frame. I gave you a picture of Bitcoin like you would never see on any other channel. In-depth, awesome analysis. And just kind of one other thing I want to show you that I'm excited about. Right? That I bring out a lot here, too. Boom, shaka bounce. Told you, I saw it on the five minute. We'll see, it hasn't bounced yet. Let's see if we can get the bounce. It hasn't really bounced yet. Let's not cut our chickens before they hatch. All right, but shout out to Dave Van Beaten. I like that, Dave Van Beaten, what a name. It's kind of a cool name. Yo, I was hanging out with Van Beaten last night. Dude was, dude was wild, man. He was wild, bro. It was a crazy night. It was a crazy night. <laughs> Let's have a big sip of the water. Let's stay hydrated. Let's remember to stay hydrated. Sometimes I forget because I'm so excited. The live stream gets me going. It gets me going, gets me excited. Motivate with me, baby. Motivate with me. Stay with me, baby. Let's keep it moving. You bring out the best in people. You grow, I grow, baby. That's what happens, man. You made you made it easy. Shout out to the Biomex, Tex Max of the game. Biomex, man, we love you, brother. I can't wait to play pool with you one more day, one more, you know, a, a couple more times. Or what am I saying? One more time. I can't wait to play pool with you again one time in my life. And I'm not going to be morbid, but I do have to talk about the facts here. We never know where we're going to go. Today could be the last day of my life. And you know what? I want it to be the best day of my life. I want people to remember me and say, man, that guy was awesome. That guy was solid. That guy was spot on. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, just one thing to think about, you know. Um, 
And you know, I found something recently. My dad did have a page, and I was excited to see that he, he still had a page up um, on Legacy.com. It's kind of cool about being online, right? But brace yourself, but there's my dad, man. There's my dad, man. And, um, you know, one of his buddies wrote, I had a right right here. My dad was such a loving man. I miss his love every day. Rest in peace, my father and buddy of life. You were the best, baby. I miss you daily, man. He was like the strong man. He was strong, baby. Here's one of his buddies. I just heard of Jimmy's passing. My deepest condolences to the wonderful Price family. May you rest in eternal peace, my friend and brother. I have fond memories of our of our time together on the iron and on the vineyard. On the iron is, you know, he was an iron worker. On the iron because they were up in the up high in the in the sky, man. 200 feet in the air. You know, they go three stories at a time. My dad was an iron worker, man, building the cities that we live in. God bless my father. I miss you, dad, more than you would ever know, man. I miss you, dad. I miss you, man. Man, I miss my pops, man. Strong as an ox, man. Hard man. Worked for Local 7 for over 30 years as an iron worker. Traveled for work throughout the United States. He read so many books, you know. And uh, may God bless my father, man. And shout out to anyone that sent condolences, sent flowers. May God bless each and every one of you. My dad passed on May 2nd. Um, We were all there with him. He was already basically kind of done, but they had him connected to machines. And we unplugged the machines, and we saw eventually the thing flatline, and that was it, man. And they called it at 145 on May 2nd. I was live streaming. Next thing you know... I finished the live stream and my mom calls me. Your father's getting airlifted to the hospital. I, I just ran. I grabbed a, a quick bag with a charger for my phone. Um, you know, like a sweater in case or whatever. And I, I got in an Uber and, and I was at the hospital till 2 in the morning that day. Um, just crazy, man. Just crazy. Put it right here, man. And don't talk nonsense. Hot, you should be touching that stuff. Hot, hot. Huh? Hot, hot. What do you mean hot, hot? hot. What is hot hot? That's some football. Ha ha ha. Get over here. Get over here. Get over here, you little munchkin. Give me a hug. Even she was crying, right? You were crying the other day, huh? Yeah. Miss my dad, huh? Oh, I love you. Get out of here before people see your face. I don't like putting my kids on social media, you know? As I get bigger and bigger, I I, I kind of want to keep it under wraps, but they're my kids, man. They're for us. You know what I mean? Let's take a look at the eight-hour time frame. One thing I want to look at is the eight-hour, all right? Eight-hour time frame. And the eight-hour has something interesting going for it, and I've been talking about it recently, all right? And it's this little bullish divergence here. See this swing up? Well, the eight-hour swung down. I mean, that tells me that we should get a move to the upside here. We should break above these highs. You know, I'm looking for a break above these highs here, right? And we got that point of control in the eight hour at 27,800, right? And again, now we got this little falling wedge too that I that I'm, I just mentioned recently, right? Inside the bigger wedge. We want to see that falling wedge break up with the bullish divertids here on the eight hour time frame. This has me long, right? Um, unless we can't get back above the previous support of resistance, then I, I will have to change my tune. But so far, I like what I'm seeing here on the eight hour time frame as well so i'm expecting a bounce length of the pole here is a move here and this is our measured move to the point of control and we would bust through this high we busted through it one time already but we lost it we got to stay back above twenty seven thousand five to remain bullish and then we got to get above this level here twenty six thousand two hundred barely to remain bullish so we have we know the levels that have to be have to we have to achieve to get back above to remain bullish everything else is just minutia everything else is just nonsense so i'm expecting a bounce here for bitcoin to the upside Based off this hidden bullish divergence, we should get a move up. I've seen it play out many times in my life. We also seem to have some falling volume here. While price is falling off, telling us that we're lacking a bit of the sellers. And wow, they're kind of merging the liquidity a little bit here on Bookmap. Link to Bookmap in the description. I do get a commission from them, but I only use it because I love it. And I use it every day. I don't can't. It's been a while, but used to use this to get away from the seven minute time frames to break through. Right. Shout out to Fasal Salim, man. Fallen wedge inside of a falling wedge. Exactly. Hey, lifers from the UK. I love you're such a family man, my friend. You gotta love, yo, all I have is my kids. Love the sounds of children, man. Man, kids are the best, man. I love my kids, you know? And uh, I'm gonna be sad when my kids grow up. 
I'm going to be sad when my kids grow up, you know? Um, and, you know, my dad, what I love about my dad is even when he was there in the hospital, man, he was well-shaven. He had no hair on his ears. He didn't have no, like, he took care of himself up until his last days. Like, that's what I'm trying to say. My dad wasn't feeble and like an old man. Like, he was, he was spot on. He died of this massive heart attack, but never had a heart attack in his life. I don't understand. I don't get it. T, I, I still sit there and I wonder, like, why did he have a heart attack and he never had a stroke? They say he had a great heart a year before that, or even six, seven, eight months before that. Said he, his health was as, his heart was as healthy as a 76 year old heart could be. He took care of himself. He ate well. He just had horrible back problems that he didn't want to get fixed, and that kind of made him a little immobile. That was his biggest issue. Had he had no back issues, my dad would have been fine. You know what I mean? So uh, I never saw my dad in the hospital in my life until that day. Until that day. And I was in the shower this morning, and it was traumatic. I was thinking about all the tubes on him. I said, shake it away, Sammy. Don't think about it. Think about the good times. But it, it, it hits you every day. I'd be lying if I said it was easy. I'd be lying if I said it was easy. You know, um, my 18-year-old just graduated, and I have another in the oven. Oh, that's amazing. That's a big, that's a wide, a wide section. Um, he did have the, uh, you know, the jab, which I begged him not to, but it is what it is. I'll do that. That's for another time and another place, you know, uh, but we can have that conversation somewhere else at one point. You know, the USA is equal right and equal projection to lend crypto at a 5.2% interest rate. Same as the Fed rates. If the Fed hikes, the crypto market can hike lending power in equality. Interesting. Uh, did your dad have, uh, I heard a lot of people having heart problems after, yep, he did, and I I begged him, I begged him not to do it, um, especially when they was older, he already had some v- viscosity issues, and I knew once he did that, uh, yeah, what God said, it's your time, it's your time, and angels are living us, uh, are living us faster, and bad ones stay, angels are leaving us faster, and the bad ones stay, that's what my wife said, man. It was his time. It was it was his time. It was his time. At least he wasn't in the hospital for months on end. You know what I mean? Anyway, back to the brass tacks, back to what's happening. Iggyverse is kind of moving here. Ig- Iggyverse, that's up 75%. One of the bigger gainers on KuCoin today. Phantom 3L getting some love, right? Some of the altcoins getting a bounce back to the upside. Sui, another big layer one. Um, starting to move in a high birds, man, all the way to 20. Are you kidding me? High birds at 20 cents. I was talking to high birds back at three cents. Not too long ago. Once it broke back inside the pattern, I drew the fact that it could break back up and even go. I cannot believe high birds is sitting at 20 cents right now. High birds, one of the bigger gainers for the, for the month, really like what an amazing coin. And look, the daily just getting started for high birds. Pretty interesting. And it had this falling wedge, broke back inside. I said, once it broke back in the pattern, you could see it break back up. Hybrids getting this massive move to the upside. We were getting to hybrids back at three cents. That's a 7X. I'm just saying, we found a 7X in the markets. 6.58% gains. I mean, yeah, it was 3.5, so not a complete 7X. But 658% gains since I was in Miami. May 25th, 26. It's, it's only been about, what, like 20 days? Imagine making 700% in 20 days. Hybrid is just doing damage. And I would have put this on your radar. We would have charted it out for you. You would have seen what's happening. Hybrid's getting the move. Also, we know all the high coins. Every high coin in the game, we have a beautiful list. We have a list for everything. High coins here. This is every high coin in the game. And you can see high coins just banging on them. High penguins up 49%. Banging to the upside, right? High birds up. High BAYC. High board. You know, I'm watching this one for our next big gainer. It's got a giant double bottom here. It's got a cup and handle inside of that zone. And the daily looks ready to rock to the upside. I would not be surprised if high MAYC was the next big mover to the upside. I, ca- I keep talking about it. It may take some time, but I've been posting it to the trading group. And thing, you wouldn't even know what a high coin was without the trading group. Like, we find these stuff together. We we push, we push, we push. And we hide, we, we find this stuff together. So, high board eight yacht club. And the high coins are fractional reserves. Of these NFTs, that's what they are, all right? Fractional reserves of the NFTs. Daily is very oversold for for this coin here. And it's in a giant double bottom. 
I mean, if you can't buy there, where can you buy? Right? And if I lose a trade, that I go in like that? If I buy up in here and you lose the trade, an M pattern, you're, you're overbought, you knew better. But buying down here is the best. For me, personally, I'm not a financial advisor. Another guy saying you should be taking his financial advice. But that's kind of, uh, that's what it's all about for me, is having parameters, having a setup, and going with the way the setup goes, right? Taking it that way. So you can't beat yourself up if you did the best you can. You get what I'm saying? And that's, that's kind of how I look at it. Did you do your due diligence? Did you wait for it to move? High Fluff also getting some love here. I put out High Fluff in this little channel. It has since gone up and down, but it's, for the most part, to the upside. The Daily actually flipping more bullish High Fluff. So the High Coins have been our saving grace where the market's kind of iffy. High Coins have blasted to the upside. And we look at the gains here, too. And we had High Azuki for 96% gains. Like, High Azuki, I mean, that's insane. That's absolutely insane. Um, nine and 19% gains here too as well and 19% gains on Mackie 6100 Mackie and Hayazuki getting the love today for the gains in the in the in the trading group so we're finding gains no matter what off the same type of system that I that I teach my elite traders and everyone else in the game looking for cup and handles looking for the falling wedges looking for the lack of bearish momentum in the MACD support and resistance Fibonacci levels and more so come to the channel to find out What's going down? All right. All right. Let's break it down. Let's get back into BTC. See what's happening. We're also going to look at ES1, S&P futures, the dollar index, and more. And um, yeah. So we're very oversold. Bitcoin's still staying right where we kind of had it at. Someone wrote Bitcoin dumping. Is that really a dump to you? I don't know. That's kind of weird. Uh, very similar story to my father. Had a massive heart attack, passed away last year, 1st of May. Never had any heart problems. We did not want him to have the... And he never felt the same after that. Isn't that strange? Isn't that strange how we have such a similar story? Um, massive heart attack, too. Like, a massive heart attack. Like, usually you have a stroke first. Usually you have some heart problems before you have a massive heart attack. You know what I mean? I, I just, like, I find it so rare, man. It does hurt. I saw my father in the hospital for a whole year before he died last year in June. That's tough, man. That's tough. Jumped in late, but I'm here. Bay Bay, shout out to Justin Cashmore in the game. We're looking for this falling wedge to break back to the upside. That's what we're looking for. Steady as she goes. Let's take a look at our one-minute chart and see if there's anything kind of, you know, we got this M pattern that dumped, but we've got bought back up on a wick here. We're kind of still holding the zone, as you can see. So not the worst, but this is also an M here too with an M on the sidelines. Not the best, but the one minute does want to push us back to the upside. We're bouncing off the bottom of the channel. I'm going with that seven and that 15 minute oversold that wants to get a bounce back to the upside. I could be wrong. I'm just playing the probabilities and there's a, a hidden bullish divergence that tells us we should get a bounce to the upside as well. I could see price action just fumbling around though until we get the red, the, red, the Fed hike. You know what I mean? Because even though we got it, people aren't sure. One thing I keep talking about is the CME watch tool. We went from 70 to 90% this morning after the good CPI data. So we went over CPI data when you first came to the live. 1%, uh, 0.1%. It only rose 0.1%. In May, we thought it could raise higher, right? And, um, you know, it's better than the overall. In the last 12 months, the overall item index increased 4% before seasonal adjustment. Isn't that strange? Oh, yeah, because people buy more of this than that. and uh, They buy less of that during this. So we... They're going to find any way they can to skew those numbers. Luna C has been interesting to me. Um, it's kind of starting to get a bit of a bounce again. And it actually may make another trade here. Uh, it, it may make another move. I didn't make a trade. I'm just... It's kind of making this what's called a, you know, a bit of a symmetrical triangle here. And I would watch Luna C. If Bitcoin can get the pump, Luna C will follow for another Luna C. Get out like that. It's Luna C out here. But Luna C could get another pump up. About 10% gains on a scalp and may continue to the upside. I'd be watching this for a possible move sometime today as well with the lack of momentum of the MACD. I'll see this kind of cup and handle. we got a falling wedge also on the RSI, and the stochastics are still pointing to the upside. It would be a scalp, though. High-risk scalp. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. Just something that I'm seeing. Shout out to Legos the Lifer, man. God bless you, man. God bless the Lifers. God bless the Legos the Lifer. God bless you, man. And there's nothing we can do because the government protected these companies. Yeah. I got heart inflammation all three times. They made me take it. Had to, or I was going to lose my job. I'm so sorry to hear that, man. 
Um, I pulled my wife out of school. Me and her would, I would have, I would have lost my job. I would, I prayed to God and I did everything I could and I just refused. I said, there's no way I'm putting anything like that inside of my body. I'm staying true to myself. Um, I just believe in God too much. And I, I'm be honest, this is going to be interesting, but you put your entire faith in God. Doesn't matter what job you lose. Doesn't matter how bad it gets. Somehow God will find a way for you. Uh, look what happened to me. You know what I mean? Cryptocurrency took off. I lost my job. Not because of that, but because, you know, I was working for David Letterman. He was doing live shows and he wasn't going to do a live show in front of everybody that got canceled. And I had a really good gig. Things were going well, but it was supposed to happen for me. My life was supposed to be torn apart. I was supposed to go on this path. I was supposed to become the crypto lifer, push my channel to the upside and just become dedicated. So um, what happened to Ben? You know, Ben Coin took a beat down, man. Honestly, it's really sad what happened to Ben. Uh, I'll break it down and we'll talk about it. What happened to Ben was sad. You know, they kind of, it got, uh, honestly, I lost, I lost a good amount of, I, I mean, I made good money on Ben cause I got in really early. Right. And I sold, I sold very close near the top and then I, but I did buy back in and that trade went down. Uh, but I made, here's my deal. And I'm going to talk about my story. I made 13 grand trading Pepe. And then I put three grand into PSYOP, Ben, and a few other coins. And it's probably down a thousand. Like, I, I probably lost two grand doing that, right? So it was high risk, high reward. You know, I took a shot. And I'm still up 10 grand on my meme coin fiasco. So I consider myself okay. You know what I mean? And I'm still going to hold them long term and see what's going to happen. But Ben, what happened to Ben was it had a logo like a dog. Um, and what happened was the logo. And look, Casper up from my, my buy yesterday at 15.5 on the channel. And so they took Ben off a of Uniswap. And when they did that, I mean... Number one, they 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 gave a, a, a lot of, a lot of lost faith in the project, right? From everyday people, because they were like, I can't trade it. Number two, people that just wanted to buy it couldn't buy it. It wasn't on Uniswap. It was only on Mexi, and Mexi is still beginning. Not not everybody knows about Mex Global. Like they really don't. It's still like a, a kind of a baby exchange, you know. Um, still, it's five years old, but I mean that's nothing compared to the exchanges, right? And like two or three years ago, I didn't even know about it. So it's it's just starting to get it. But it can make a rounded bottom here, begin to round on out. I don't think they're done working on it. I'm going to hold it for the next six, to so, six, seven months to a year, and we'll see where it goes. But Ben had an issue on Uniswap with liquidity. That created a bit of a problem, and it you know started to kind of dump to the downside. So um, falling wedges do break up to the upside 90, 68% of the time. And I see a rounded bottom here for Ben again. This is something I'm not even going to really TA until I start to see it make some bigger moves. But yeah, it retraced all the way to the 886 retracement. It got slammed and sold off. Nobody knew about it. Nobody could access it. It wasn't on Uniswap. And I believe it's back on Uniswap. But let's take a look here. I can't confirm or deny that. So let's take a look if you can still buy Ben on Uniswap. We'll launch the app. All right. We'll connect my walletta. Who's got a walletta? Where's my walletta? And again, I'm my own man. I want to make that really clear. I follow no no person in crypto but my life herself, my own conviction. I have friends in the space, and I'm associated with different types of people, but I don't follow anyone blindly. When I got into Ben, it was just, you know, it was complete, completely speculative move, as well as PSYOP. PSYOP also got drained. Both coins kind of did nothing, for, but we'll see. My father died of aggressive cancer. I'm sorry to hear that, man. I was forced to. I would have lost my job. I have heart problems now. So sad. I, I, I hate hearing this, man. Uh, my sons had to drop out of university and college or they would be expelled. One has since finished and the other is in the midst of finishing. My family is motivated and stubborn. Yeah, I would have, uh, I wouldn't have let them. I would have, they would have had to leave college. Same thing for me. There would have been no parameters that would have forced me to do it. There, nothing would have, for, I, I believe in God too much. My conviction and myself and, um, and again, you could say I got lucky. Things went out. Like, I pulled my wife out. of. She was a school teacher. I pulled her right out of the school. She lost her pension, everything. We had nothing. I mean, we had our crypto bags, and 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 my job got taken away, too. So we were sitting there unemployed. Uh, life was not easy. Thank God I learned how to trade. Thank God I had trading in my back pocket. Thank God I found Phantom. Thank God I found Bitcoin on the lows, and trading changed my life. Selling uh, a few of those coins at the certain times gave me enough of my bank account to survive. And that gave me, and then people saw that I did that on the live stream, right? They saw that I got into Bitcoin at, at, at $6,000, $3,000. Um, they saw, and I was calling for a tw over 20K Bitcoin. That happened. 
All of these things happened to me and changed my life. Um, shout out to Tony Rosas. Not if we can stop it, baby. No waves coming. Not, not unless we can stop it. Not happening. I respect the conviction, lifer. Yep. I had to, I, I, I tried to stop them and got, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We made respect for you, brother. Thank you. Wow, all these stories about heart attacks after it. Yep, I saw a corona. Uh, I talk about finding hair like fibers in people's arteries. Thought it was fake. Now I wonder. Lost my business online. Why? Amen, Sammy. We will be home soon. I really truly believe that this will happen within our lifetimes. Cast paw with an A, man. I've said it five times now. I love you. They try to blame on all sorts of other. Yeah, yeah. If you did take, you could. Sell it, salation, oral salation and distilled water. Interesting. Yeah, they are. Yeah, let's not feed the out. Yeah, yeah, failed liver waiting on transparent at 46 content like Sam keeps the time occupied. Amen. Have you heard about? Yeah, all right. Let's, 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 let's get off of it. Let's get off of it. Let's get off of it. I fight with, with from within. I've always found it. You don't do what they want you to do. You do something completely different that they haven't even thought about. That's what I'm here for. All right. Casper ticket is K-A-S. Casper. So let's take a look at Ben Token here on Coin Market Cap, which they were off Coin Market Cap for a bit too. Maybe they're still they're there. They're back on with the new logo. Everything has been kind of back in twenty-eight million dollar market cap. Not too bad. Got a little bit of a spike today from six ten to six fifty-seven. Funny, Ben big crash coming and Ben sell and buy Luna C. People are pushing Luna C, man. Um, interesting. Everyone's saying sell Ben and buy Luna C. It's weird. That's like the the running story. So we'll, we'll grab here, but I believe it's still it is on Uniswap. Swap for ETH here. Select the token, paste the token in. Oh, wow. So it's not on Uniswap. You, you still can't buy it on Uniswap. See, that's the that's the problem right there. You see that? Or maybe you can. No, you can. There it is. Yeah, you can. You can do it. So Ben's back. But it has this weird, like... See how it has this, like... It's not, like, lighting up. It's a little weird. Right? Hmm. Looks different than another coin. Let's go to another coin that's like on Uniswap. Like it's PSYOPs on Uniswap, right? Which PSYOP too, right? It's like... How could I have a $383 million market cap? That's so big. I don't know if this is... Just be careful when you're doing this stuff too. Yeah, see how it's lit up? You know what I mean? Again, that may not be the right side. I'll be careful. I get it only from actual Ben on ETH uh, uh, Twitter because I want to see that. You know what I mean? But something is weird with Ben Token there because it it doesn't light up all the way, right? It doesn't light up all the way. New logo, new idea. And um, where else can you buy Ben? Like, did they have... Uh, so you get it on BitGet, which is awesome. They get it on L Bank. You get it on MexC, CoinX, BitMart, Bit4X. So it's on all these other places. And it does say it's on Uniswap right there for Ben.eth, right? We'll grab that contract address. I just want to see. It's still kind of weird how, like, you click on it, but it looks like it's not there, but it is there. It's a little strange. All right. Um, anyway. But it's it's back. But, yeah, for a while it was off Uniswap. I mean, that's got to hurt a coin when it, it, may, it probably could have bounced from here. You know, but when you can't buy the thing and it's taken off a major, you know, centralized exchange, we want to see if this can bottom here at this double bottom area where people are kind of done and we can start to bowl on out for Ben. So just something to think about. All right. Just went from zero to 100 real quick in the rabbit hole. Much love to Lifer fam, as always. Yep. All right. And I'm not promoting... Uh, whatever. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not giving into to hate, hatred, and nasty things. Right? Damn, man. Bitcoin struggling here. Twenty five eight eight six. Just getting a, a sell off today. It's it's kind of interesting. Um, but again, it still has hidden bullish divergence. 
You know, we can kind of tweak this line. It's still holding the zone and it's very oversold. I still expect a bounce out of this, even though it looks insane. Let's look at our one minute time frame here. All right. And again, I'm not promoting anything. When I buy something and I lose money in it, I'm not promoting it. Like, you know what I mean? I'm just so real that I'm showing you everything that I'm doing. You know what I mean? As far as I'm, because everyone, like everyone else, see, that's the difference between me and everyone else. Everyone else gets paid to talk about something. I make enough money teaching with my trading group and with my own trades that I don't need to shill anything for, for anybody. You know what I mean? I don't show other projects. I don't show other ideas. No one calls me, hey, man, can you talk about this? No. Like, I'm talking about how I put in two grand at abandoned, and I probably have like 300 bucks now. I lost like 1,500 bucks. You know what I mean? From that, from the secondary buy that I made. The first buy, fine, I made some money. Um, I'm telling you the truth of how I lost money. So, like, I don't know how I'm promoting. Um, I'm just telling you my life. Like, this is my life story. If it's part of my life story, it's part of my life story. I bought into this. I bought into that. Like, I'm showing you my Casper bags. Like, I'm just real. You know, if it happens to to come across as something, it's not. I'm not shilling anything. No one's ever asked me to shill a coin. I don't shill on you. Like, I don't do that. I don't do it. I get upset when people even think that that's the case. You know what I mean? Anyway, where do you drag the fib from the bottom or the top? It depends. You can drag it from the top if you're trying to short. You can drag it from the bottom if you want a long. Okay? I meant Cosmos, not Atmos. Derp. Interesting. Hey, Lifer, glad I found you through Frankie Candles. I love the energy to grow. I'm currently in the path. Learning of truth. Christian consciousness. Marcus Aurelius. By the way, I'm also a steel worker. Shout out to my man, Brian, Brian Esquivel, man. God bless you, brother. Thank you for being out here, man. Iron workers, steel workers. God bless you, brother. Shout out to the congressman that put a motion to fire Gary Gensler. God bless that man. You don't have to defend yourself, Sam. We all know it's outside of your character. Shout out to Jacob Sheldon. And besides Price, how do you feel about Engrave cold storage wallet? I never heard about it, man. Uh, I never heard about it. And that's why I don't buy streamer coins. Tony Rojas. High BAYC moving. That's good to know, man. Getting a little bit of a pump there for high BAYC. I still can't believe Highbirds is sitting at 20. 20. I remember buying this thing at 6 cents in Miami. I did sell at 13. Dang. Now I'm like, oh, wow. Can't believe how big that would have been. And it was two grand, too. Funny. Yeah, it's like three point three point two three, right? Or three. Oh, look at that. 20 divided by 6. I had to do it while I was doing that. And look look what it was. Out of nowhere, right? Yeah, it would have made $6,000. Pretty insane. These coins could make, make, could make you money. Um, Sam, could you do a Jordan Cameron impersonation again? I don't know. I don't want to make fun of anybody. I don't want anyone to think I'm being... I like Jordan. He's a nice guy. So I don't know if I can do that. I guess he was talking about paying people back from the hack in Bankcoin. So that might hurt the price a bit as well um but a coin is a coin they're all risky more ta savvy thank you sir amen amen and send a ta or super chat or deep dive if you're out there shout out to the 200 dollars in super chats man god bless my man for throwing down very nice hey uh, there's a lifer there's a lifer i like the lifer life is over here i like the lifer how's that that's all i'll do because that's what he said today he said he liked the lifer he was a nice guy he said what up what up to him too what's up brother Let's better our lives and be free. Amen. Amen. Do it. Jordan doesn't care. <laughs> you guys are funny, man. Shout out to Jordan, man. I didn't watch this. I hadn't watched any other YouTuber in a long time. I've been grinding so hard and just doing my thing, staying in the zone. You know? I do see a long coming. Let me look for my one minute bullish div. And we got one minute bullish div right here. Look at it. We got swing up to swing up for Bitcoin. We got swing down to swing down. Tells me that we're going to get that bounce back to the upside and hit in bullish. Actually, we're going to start losing the hit in bullish soon as it gets flatter. Eventually, if this comes down, we do not have hit in bullish on the bigger time frame. 15 minute. Still there right now, but eh, no. It's starting to bleed on out. See that? And again, I'm not always 100%. I wish I was, right? I wish every single time I called it, it would go exactly where I wanted it to go. What we can do here is we can pull a Fibonacci. And again, they're just like manipulating the price right now. Like they're just playing games with people. There's the 786. Could be a nice place to jump on in, right? We get here in the 786 stop loss somewhere below this 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 trend line here. So we'll try a 786 trade here. Technically, when we hit the 786, we should get a bounce to the upside. We're basically right on the 786, getting very very close. 
25833. The low volume is bad news. I feel like I'm too late to short it. Yeah, I mean, I'd be looking, I'm looking for the bounce, but we're not getting it. It's acting like a Friday today right now. You know what I mean? Like it's, price action is just kind of flat, hanging in there. I am still expecting a bounce to the upside. I know I'm being, sound like a broken record, but that's what I'm talking about. All right. Oh man, they're they're really draining us here though. Look at that. 786 right there. Wick to the 786 from this impulse to that impulse. Bang. And honestly, there should be a bounce there on that 786 level, right? That should be a bounce. Might want to come down to this. This is a big order block. See that? These are just order blocks. Anyone who uses order blocks, all they're doing is using support and resistance, just so you know, and and big areas of liquidity. That's it. You know what I mean? Order blocks is just a fun way to talk about it, but oh, that's all it is. If you match up order blocks with VRVP, you're going to see they match exactly the same. You know, like that's an order block because we bounced up there and there was a bunch of orders there. An order block comes from previous orders, right? That's where the block, it's a block of orders, right? That's all it means. So just remember like, don't get too into the into the terminology here. So, wow, we're getting drained now. This falling wedge is breaking to the downside. And the one thing, I mean, the one minute didn't look amazing. Like, when we looked at it, it did have an M pattern here, right? And, wow, now we're getting drained. Let's look at the, I have to look at a smaller time frame to see what's going down here. I'm always dumbfounded when we don't get the bounce. I'm like, we should have got a bounce there. Why didn't we get the bounce? And why is Bitcoin getting sold off even though we had good CPI data? It doesn't make any sense, right? Inflation did go down, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to long it right here. I'm going to long it right here off of the 786 Fibonacci level. I'm going to pull the life of friend and see what happens. Let's go life of friend. Let's make it let's make it work baby. Let's make it do what it does. All right? And we're going to long that resistance. We're going to long that bounce off Bitcoin. It's going to be a very 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 close trade to the bone though. See I'm going to attempt to pull off the live your friend special here, all right? I'll show you what my man does. He's been attempting to teach me, but I got to do things live to like really feel it. You know what I mean? That's kind of how I work. So we'll go to like that five minute chart. We'll look at impulse. We pull the fib here. We see that we came to that 786 right there, right? Should get a bounce to the next resistance and take profit at 26,032, right? Which would be our next kind of area to watch for, for a move. So... This guy, what he does, is he does 200% leverage, right? But he does cross, which I've never done cross at 200%. To me, that's a a, a bit crazy, right? Um, Usually, they wick us down. They should wick us back up through this area. When you get a massive sell-off, and look, they're they're liquidating the longs right now. You want to see that a lot of longs get liquidated. That's what you're looking for. We do see some orders here at 25.5. And look, they spoofed us. They took away those orders that were up here. I got, I got a few up there, but they're not as close as they were before. It takes guts, though. It takes guts to make the call. All right? And that's right there. That's a 786 retracement. Okay? So, this man uses 200x leverage. I don't know how he... This is what he does. But he uses cross, not isolated. Now, you were telling me to start with a dollar, right? But I can't start with a dollar. Look, look. See that? That's 13 bucks. Like, I can't seem to get this to be a buck. You get it? No matter how hard I try. So this is, this is, I was trying to replicate what you did, and I, I couldn't do it. Like, I was having a problem, right? See this? Like, it gives me 13. That's the best I can do. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know how you get, you know, 200 X with 0.01% of the wallet, right? Yeah, going up to the stop hunt below the zone. 
We already would have been up, actually, had we nailed that bottom at 738. We'd be up nicely already, like, bang. So if I use 13, see, all I can, I can't seem to get this to a dollar, man. Type the amount. Where? Where? Type in a dollar here. Doesn't let me type one dollar. And it says zero. I, 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 I don't know, man. Open long at a dollar with 200X, like, Single limit quantity can't be less than $2.58. See, I can't, I don't know why. I can't do what you, you're, you're telling me to do. I, I've never been able to do it. Right? So it has to be like three bucks. So you open along and I, you know, I'm just, I'm attempting to figure out what this man does. All right? And it didn't open the position. You seen that? Look, we would have won on that move already. We'd be up right now had I just pulled the trigger with, with whatever I had before. So $3 at 200x leverage, open the long. Cancel. Limit order for Bitcoin has been canceled. Why? You see? Five bucks then. And look, it says 18 cents. See that? I, I, I don't understand what's happening here. It doesn't, it doesn't, uh, I, I can't seem to do what you do. Um, so you have to do like one zero zero like that. Look, it's saying zero on the margin. You get it? Can't seem to do it, man. I was able to open it up with, what, five bucks? Position is $2.58, right? So I have two bucks at 200x leverage. Uh, I don't understand. I really don't get it. You know what I mean? Type in 200. 200 where? You know, just interesting, right? Anyway, um, the USD amount is the total position with leverage. Exactly. Down here it is. You know what I mean? No, that, that that's not true, actually. That's exactly how much I'm adding to the trade. You see? That's 160 bucks I'm putting in the trade. That's not the leverage amount, all right? The leverage amount will show up once the position is in there. So look, did I did it already get liquidated? See that? Like, see what I'm saying? Like, I don't. It doesn't work for. I I I. You, we gotta sit and do it over and over again. So like, I know it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. Like, I would long with like 13x leverage, 15x leverage, right? And I would long with like, you know. And it's funny that order confirmation. I didn't see the order confirmation, right? I want to see that first so I can see my liquidation. It's like I would long this with 147 box, with 15x leverage, you know. We'll have to do a stream where the chat teach Sam how to trade. Exactly. We will zoom against you. It doesn't, it's not making sense to me. You get it? You see how it doesn't make any sense? You know, maybe because I'm not cross. I don't know. You tell me, but it, it I, I still don't understand, you know? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to open up along at this extremely oversold region here. So liquidation price would be 24129 right? Margin uses 147 That's the must. That's the amount that I have. You get it? I put 147 in the trade. Just want to make that really clear. And then it tells me my position is 2,000, right? Because I'm 15x long, and you're timesing that 15 times. So that's the, that's the, that's that, this is how much you're actually putting into the trade here. This is your leverage position. Okay. I just want to make that really clear. You have to open the trade while sitting on a lily pad like friend does. I can tell who's not in the trading group, right? Love your leverage multiplier on the lower sums. Lower your leverage multiplier on the lower sums. See, I don't, just above the box, when you get to type the price, change the quantity to amount. I don't know what he's saying either there. Continuously fill the futures quantity. No, Bitcoin, no, US Tether. Anyway, We'll see, and I'll be continue to add to this trade. I'm expecting a bounce for Bitcoin regardless of what I'm seeing here. But actually, I mean, now we're barely retesting. Slight bullish divergence. I'll be honest, man. I, I don't have an edge today. The market's looking garbage. Looking hard to trade. Extremely hard to trade. Like, I looked at all these different parameters, and I still, still not seeing my edge for the day. I really am not, you know? I'll be honest. Like, there's days where I, I'm nailing it, and I can see exactly what's happening. And then there's days where I'm just like, dude, it's not making any sense to me. You know what I mean? And today's one of those days where just like looking like 
You know, it can be frustrating too for a streamer because I want to be right as much as possible. I want to look like the man who knows it all. But again, explaining to you that sometimes it's not there is, a, is another way to show you that I don't know it all, right? Um, every day is a battle. And how you feel too depends on the trade. Like what's happening in your life? Are you focused? What I see here is a bullish divergence on the one minute. See, this is swinging up. Well, this is swinging down. And that's telling me we're going to get a bounce to the upside at one point. So, and only time will tell. We have a major bullish divergence. Even on my indicator is calling it out. So we'll see. We will see. You will, you will have nothing and be happy. Klaus Schwab, right? Guy's the worst, man. The higher the leverage, the faster you spot will be liquidated. Don't listen to these fools. The key is to look for the bottom and adding into the trade. No, what they do is they use 200x leverage, but they only put a buck in. And then as the leverage starts to change, they add more to the trade. It's He's explained it to me, but it just not it doesn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense to me. And there we go. Let's see if we can get this move back to the upside here. And I'm just nibbling. I'm just nibbling. I am bullish on the bigger time frame, but we do have to kind of, you know, we got to hold the zone here for Bitcoin. If you're new to the channel, jump on in. Shout out to the 600 people on the live stream. Thank you for jumping on in. Appreciate each and every one of you for being here. 591 people. God bless you all for jumping on into the live. Let's look at ES1, the S&P futures. I want to see what's happening to the S&P, which has been very, very bullish. Look at that shoulder, head and shoulder to the upside for the S&P. So if you remember correctly, we called this flag out on the S&P yesterday. And we took the length of the poll and suggested that this could break to the upside and continue to go up. And uh, ES1 is looking pretty nice to me. And now it's in another flag, and it's continuing the one-hour time frame. I mean, this one hour, it says it ain't done yet. So you can see the uncorrelation between Bitcoin and S&P futures. All right. I need to change my Discord name. Shout out to James Wozniak. Let's crow. Let's, let it ride, Sam. I'm in with you. Amen. I'm in there. I'm James. I was talking to you the other night. Shout out to James Wozniak. God bless you, brother. I love you, man. You're the greatest. Keep up the great work. Also, S&P looks like it's going to crash hard if you scroll down out on the weekly. Oh, wow. Cheeks, man. Watch your spot will be liquidated unless you buy in perfectly, which is very hard to time. I mean, my liquidation is 24,000. We're up now. I mean, that was a beautiful call. Like 1%, you know, I go for 1% to 3%. If I made bigger money, Right? But my liquidation is 24-1. I mean, that's, that's you know, we're so far from that liquidation. So, to me, it's not that serious. You know what I mean? And again, I just started trading futures like two, two three months ago. I'm not like, I'm not, I, I made a lot of money without trading it. So, I still kind of laugh at it sometimes. I'm sorry to be rude. I'm like, ha, huh, nice futures trade for you. But I, I find it comical, right? Say you made a million dollars, right? Doing something. And then someone else was trading smaller amounts of money with high leverage it would probably like you would just be like eh like it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't uh it wouldn't get you going like what gets me going is adding to my casper bag and watching that thing go 100x in the next two years and then i can show the bag and be like look what i did baby look how long it took me look how much research i did like that to me is is love like i'm addicted to that i have my own kind of way of doing it Former SEC Chief Securities and Exchange Commission, former Chief of the Internet Enforcement, John Real Stark, believes that the U.S. Department of Justice will file or already did. Um, yeah, I read that. That was the worst article I ever read, man. That article was clickbait, man. It was a bunch of trash. Also wondering if Bitcoin will be coming down to 23.5. Check the weekly. We did check the weekly already. Um, I don't see it, but it could happen. If we stay below the 200 SMA on the weekly chart, we will go lower. We will go lower. Do you think Bitcoin's going up? I believe we're going to get a bounce back to the upside for sure. Right? I mean, look at that. We're up 3%. I'm really good at nailing 3%. Like, I am I can nail 3%. Like, I do it all the time. Like, I nail 3% trading leverage, like, daily. Like, constantly. Now, I don't put a lot of money into it because I'm still not... I don't like losing money. So, I'm not going to sit there and start throwing, tossing money in here. Until I can turn $1,000 into $2,000, I have no business doing anything else. You know what I mean? So, I keep it simple for myself. And I just chip away, right? Um, I keep it simple and I just chip away. But I, I was expecting a bounce here for Bitcoin. So far, so good. We'll see what happens. But we did get the bounce. So you can see, you know, not up a lot, right? It's 15x leverage with $146. So it's not like, 
but I'm feeling out my strategies. The idea to trading is to use small amounts of money to figure out your strategy. Once you have a strategy, you can start to increase the money, but don't get greedy. The second you get greedy and you go too hard, you end up losing a lot of the gains you made before. So it's a step-by-step process. And that's the, that's what trading, that's what spot trading. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing I do should be taken as financial advice, but I don't throw money around that I think I'm going to lose. You get it? I put money where I believe I'm going to win. And I've won so many times in my life. Like I just see, hey, why aren't I, I figure I'm going to continue to win. So S&P got a huge bounce to 44. I can see a measured move further up to about 47. All right. And we called the bottom of the S&P months ago in October. We really did. Like, and it was a bullish divergence on the weekly time frame. S&P is getting pretty high on the weekly. Doesn't mean it's the worst thing in the world. Look at the last time we got high on the weekly here. We had a slight pullback and we continued to go flying up. Here we were high on the weekly. What happened? We just continued to rip. So if they turn the money printer on, which they're about to do, remember, they're about to turn the money printer on because they have to. They don't have a choice at this point. You know it. I know it. It is what it is. So um, you can see the shoulder inverts head and shoulder there. And this is a breakout. You broke the previous high now. I mean, that's a big deal. All you have to do is stay above this. The weekly could even reset for a quick little dip, dippy doodah. But I mean, just because the weekly's high doesn't mean we can't continue to get a pump here. The daily is getting a little over, over overextended at this point, right? But I showed you where we're likely to go on the smaller time frame. So we wait out that one hour. You flag it out. You can see that you're in this little flag that bounced to the upside. I've seen these play out many times. And then we'll probably get a pullback on the daily time frame. Moving averages are getting pretty far apart, right? And the four hour and the daily are getting very overbought. So you'd expect some type of pullback like this and a bit of a flag here for the S&P. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it does look like we'll get some type of pullback, you know? It's been kind of overextended for the last few days. Meant Apple stock, not the S&P. That's my mistake. Interesting. I've seen some people be lucky with leverage and they still rolling, but it's like a casino. I just stake my lunacy and forget about it. Just looked. Yeah, it's doing something. Really? You can stake lunacy? I mean, if you use 200 leverage, your liquidation will happen a lot faster. It's much safer with 15 like you were doing. Don't use 200x. But my man uses 200x with a, with a, with a dollar, but he uses cross leverage. I don't like cross leverage because that's how I've seen many people. What happens when they use cross is they keep adding to the position and they don't realize that they're draining their actual account. And next thing you know, it gets liquidated. So you can lose a, mo- a lot of money doing cross leverage. Sam is Yoda on the charts anyway. Dipping the toes in leverage with good risk tolerance will only expand his dimensional view on the charts. Amen. I got the Bitcoin jump shot on that 7.9. Let's go. 50x trade with 100 bucks. Very tight stop loss. High leverage, baby. I mean, we're winning the trade right now. Like, you can clearly see that I, I I think I'm at 4%, almost 3.2%, right? And that took a lot of guts to call that 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 short right there. I mean, that, that bounce back in, right? I mean, it was, that was intense, all right? There's some fine tuning to my leverage system, and it's for the pros, man. See, life or friend. Don't, don't, and everyone, don't get personal about why someone or someone doesn't trade your style. Like, if I'm not, if I can't, if, if it doesn't make sense to me, you have to remember, I'm super stubborn, and I made a bunch of money. So, like, the money's made me stubborn. You know what I mean? If I never made any money, I might be like, oh, yeah, let me try. But, it, but like, I'm stubborn as all heck. You have to remember that. And, I, you know, I've done very well for myself. So it's hard to list. Like, my dad, I used to tell my dad, buy gold and silver. And, like, he worked his way up. He grinded. He owned two homes. He did his thing. He looked at me and just said, like, don't tell me what to do with my money. Like, I made my money. You'll make your own money your own way. He's like, I'm not buying gold. And I told him, man, it's 500 bucks an ounce. It's only going to go up. Whatever, like, I could never convince my dad, no matter how many hours of research I did, no matter all the things I did. I said, Dad, dad buy Bitcoin at 16000 That's a great place. I'm buying this much. And he said, uh, you do you, man. You know, so I'm probably a lot like my father in that sense. You know, we're all in on this move back up. I'm 5% so far. Bitcoin is going to pop. Shout out to my man of race one of the game. You earn about 90% APY on Terra Station. Plus party upgrade with Cosmos tomorrow. will bring life to Luna C. Interesting. A dollar two hundred X, if you go down forty percent, you're still only 80, 80, 80 bucks with a forty percent drop. Then you add to it. If it drops, you're leverage a lot. No increase from Fed tomorrow, and the S P will take off. What is two hundred X with two dollars? You're better off just putting in the real money with bigger liquidation points. 
You're doing it right with 15X. Shout out to Stephen Wood. Trading styles are highly personalized to one's character and what works best for one doesn't always work best for another. Cross is good if you have large amounts of funding to sit under your trades. Yeah, but you can also lose a boatload. Apple's Weekly just makes me believe there's a huge drop coming on every other market. Give it a look, man. Let me know if you agree. Well, I just showed you how the weekly could be high and you could still pump to the upside. You know what I mean? I'm on demo for now this month. My balance for the whole month is negative 2%. If I do it full time, plus 7%. Most profitable trades are only if I'm in work or during sleep time. Up 70%, hopping in on that small SUI pullback. Bitcoin of the seven it looks perfectly bounced off the support. Can you please analyze Euro USD? Always put in a stop loss before submitting the trade. I usually do put a stop loss. That 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 time I did not. You know what I mean? Just because it's a small amount of money, you know. And what I'll do is I'll just I'll just flash close it. If if I'm watching the charts closely, I mean, and I always use a stop loss. But if I'm watching the car, the charts ex- extremely close, then I'll let it slide. All right. Let's take a look at Bitcoin here on Binance back again. Let's kind of talk about what I was looking at here on the 7 and the 15. 7 minute looks ready to rumble. It looks ready to go, right? And it did, eh, it kind of crossed the hidden bullish though. Because now we got to swing up. Because you could take it from here and say it's a swinging up. Yeah, on the 15 minute, we still have some hidden bullish divergence. All right. I know it looks like spaghetti here. Let me clean it up for you. You have this swing low to this swing low. Oh, no, no, no. You went lower. You went lower. Negated. Negated. You could try to use the wicks, but I don't use wicks. To me, it lost support, and and now it could barely retest. It really could. We got to break back up to the upside. We got to get back up out of the zone. You see that? bounce back up and that's all I'm trading is just a small bounce to the top of this channel nothing crazy nothing crazy all right to use ATR as a stop loss sometimes I do it depends it could be a good indicator you know what I mean the all uh, the true range I mean I've used it in my in the past average true range But honestly, I just use support of resistance and levels that I know are likely to hold or not hold. You know what I mean? I'm going to recreate what I'm looking at. The charts got me a little like, I don't know. They're, they're not easy. to. It's not it's not an easy day. It's not like a, a cut and dry. Um, and like this could still be in a descending triangle right now. If we can't get back above this, this zone. I just have to put that out there. And descending triangles like the dump in your face to the downside. So this makes more sense to me. It gives me some sense of of, of, of order, right? Almost say like we broke out. Or you could say we're almost re... You could say, fine, we, we could be retesting this zone. And that is like the bigger falling wedge that we had here too. And what I was attempting to put out is something like this. This just gives me some type of structure to work on. That makes sense to me. And we get a bounce up the falling wedge back to the upside. We do have a gap there in the VRVP too. See that? If we can bounce off this point of control, we're likely to get back up to 26,480. So. Shout out to everybody. Have a blessed day. Love you all. Thanks, Sammy, for the stream and the high vibes, man. What kind of music is life or music? I like house music. My significant movement is flashing a zone in the seven minute that we're bottomed out. And we got a stoke bullish div to accommodate it. Shout out to Dollar Dollar Crypto, man. Thanks for being you, man. Really appreciate you as a person. All of the hard work you put in for the community. You can tell that you generally enjoy this and care for your viewers. Shout out to Millennial Live, man. Thank you for the love, man. Hard to convince a stubborn man. Tried to get my old man to buy a few Bitcoin at 16K. Wouldn't do it and won't even say I was right. Yeah, you know, your dads aren't there to be your friends, man. They're there, they're there to kind of grind you out and make you strong and make you hard. If your dad made you hard, then that's what he did, you know. that Then he did his job. So it is what it is, man. It is what it is. 
I look back at all the things my dad did me did for me, and they make sense now. At the time, they didn't make any sense to me, and I couldn't understand. But now they make 100%. Like, everything makes sense, all the things that my dad did. So, as you get more mature, things start to kind of follow follow suit, and they, they make more sense for you. You know what I mean? Also, the eights are, are key levels of support and key levels of resistance. So, can we get the bounce? I'm expecting a bounce, and we'll see. You know, later on in the trading group, and I'll post it to... I'll post it to Twitter too as well. All right. Thank you for gifting memberships. I can't believe you just did that. And remember, you can become a member. We're going to do member live streams. I might even just do one tonight. You know. Life or friend grabbed it up. You're the man. Smart move. I love it. I love it. Shout out to Jay Cuban boy. Shout out to Jeremy Jones. Shout out to... And I'm not putting down... Life or, I, life or friend, I'm not putting down your strategy at all. I want to make that really clear. I think you have it down packed and I'm willing to learn it. I just can't figure it out yet. I don't understand. Uh, I can't put in a buck. I have to put in 250. I kept telling you that. Like, I'm unable to put in a buck, like you said. Uh, for whatever reason, I can't do that. I don't know why. You know what I mean? I'm willing to learn, man. I'm open-minded to learn. I don't know what everything. I really don't. Shout out to Gina Bombina in the house. She wants us to start over all the way for the beginning of the live. We can't do that, Gina. We would love to, though. But the algorithm just doesn't let us do that. Like, you know, we kind of have to keep moving. Um, I, I, You know what, though? Now that you're here, it's a new beginning. All right? Now that you're here, it's a new beginning. You were summoned by life or friend. That Canadian vibe. He could smell it. I only use 5X and it still makes me sweat. Oh, wow. Thanks to the guy giving memberships to everybody in the community. That's really nice of you, man. Dude, you have a good vibe, Millennium Live. I like your style. You have a very good vibe. We will chill a lot more all the time, man. All the time. You got to fly to Boston, man. When are you going to fly to Boston and hang out? You know what I mean? Marsolo, you're a great dude. Thanks, man. Hops in Gina's bike basket. Yeah, so funny. Flip it with the little top. You know, it's got the little top. Flip up the top. Bling. Now you're kind of like, she's riding. You got the little horn now. You're like, beep, 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 beep. Little mini lifer frog friend inside the basket. I always like when you're like jumps in pocket at the end of the stream. That, that, I like that. That used to make me laugh my, my butt off, man. I love y'all guys. Y'all guys are the best. I like the vibes, man. You Canadians are good people, man. I love the Canadians. All right, and with that, let's talk about the news. Let's bring out the news for each and every one of you here to see what's happening in the markets. Shout out to everybody here. My name is Samuel James Price, and I do a show, The Crypto Lifer Show. And together, I'm the lifer. I'm the Crypto Lifer. You guys are the lifers. Together, we make an amazing show every single day. And I want to talk about the news. That's right. There's news coming out as things to talk about and uh, more stuff coming in AI. We're going to break it down for you. Let's show you what's happening in the news every single day. Chat GPT style crypto app sets AI loose on Fed rate Bitcoin price relationship. The team behind Hong Kong based chain of demand has built investment analytic engines for financial institutions and data providers like Bloomberg. Riding the artificial intelligence popularity wave, investment data analytics firm chain of demand is providing a widget that examines Bitcoin price movements around the time of the U.S. interest rate changes just ahead of Wednesday's Federal Reserve rate announcement. The chain of demand dashboard creators who have worked on complex machine learning engines with financial institutions and data providers such as Bloomberg have pivoted into AI chatbots, specifically the the popular language recognition engine ChatGPT. A technology-focused hedge fund tend to hire postgraduates with science backgrounds to conduct complex statistical analysis on very large data sets or to apply natural language processing. The explosion of generative AI platforms is leveling the playing field and is potentially well-matched to the retail-first crypto trading space. An investor invested in Bitcoin price movements around Fed rate announcements, for example, would want fast and easy access to a range of insights that go much deeper than the generic chat GPT response. We add in our own data sets and signals, he said in an interview with Coindesk. When looking at the Bitcoin price the day after the last 10 Fed right announcements, I can then ask what else impacts the price. So that could be indicators of social sentiment around Bitcoin and whale transactions over 100,000, for example. This week, Fed's rate hike pattern modular offers a teaser of what's to come, Max said. The Hong Kong-based company dashboard is in beta testing and will be rolled out in about two months. We'll be able to get more insight possibly into what's going to happen to Bitcoin with the Fed hikes. That's pretty interesting to say the least. Um, U.S. SEC out of bounds and dragging DeFi into proposed exchange rule. Industry says the agency's comment window is closing for its proposal to expand how it defines exchanges 
including a major swath of decentralized finance. And the crypto sector is objecting. The U.S. Security and Exchange Commission wants to stretch how it identifies exchanges. It needs to regulate. And the agency's inbox is jammed with crypto industry letters accusing it of reaching well beyond its legal powers and potentially forcing rules on services uh, the platforms need, such as electric companies. The most recent rewrite of the agency's exchange proposal in April would explicitly absorb decentralized finance into the world of exchanges subject to the SEC rules and oversight, arguing that an updated rule would help modernize the securities regulator approach. The SEC had Tuesday's deadline for public input. But the crypto industry advocates and lobbyists argue that the new rule, if finalized, would violate the First Amendment rights of coders and would double down on what they see as the SEC's ongoing era of failing to treat the sector as something new. The proposal would operate as a blanket de facto banishment of DeFi from the United States. The DeFi Education Fund, a lobbying group, wrote in its comment letter, the actions and words of the commission and agency personnel have created great confusion. The agency proposal suggests that the protocols designed to bring together buyers and sellers of securities, so-called communication protocols, now perform a similar uh, enough role to exchanges that they should be regulated as such. The idea, though, it's the people that own it and the people that go back and forth. That's the key here. You know what I mean? And so if the people go back and forth and the people own it and there's not one uh, issuer and market maker, then it, it doesn't really fall under that uh, centralized exchange. Um, this could pull key outside ser- services into the SEC's web, such as messaging services and utility companies that provide electricity to platforms, the group argued. Um, crypto investment firm Paradigm weighed to defend decentralized exchanges that do not have centralized management. The securities rules are accustomed to dealing with. Yeah, you're going after an entity or person that's saying they're going to do this. This is just code that operates between people. Um, you can't really regulate a code, an AML that's an automated market liquidity creator. I mean, it's 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 kind of crazy what's happening. Um, they don't understand what's going on. Um, they're confused, and um, they're what they what they realize is they're not going to be able. They're trying to put a genie back in a box, and you can't put it in the box. It just doesn't happen like that. Uniswap Lab releases its plans for Uniswap V4, invites community feedback. The biggest decentralized crypto exchange is opening its development process to the public for the first time as the SEC cracks down on its centralized competitors. Uniswap Labs, the team behind the decentralized finance juggernaut Uniswap, announced the vision for the next iteration of its crypto exchange platform, Uniswap V4. For the first time ever, Uniswap Labs is inviting community feedback on Uniswap V4 before its public launch. The strategy focused on community input is meant to underscore Uniswap's dedication to decentralization. It's a key difference meant to separate the decentralized exchange from centralized exchanges such as Coinbase and Binance, which are currently facing lawsuits from the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Uniswap is generally credited for popularizing automated market makers, a type of blockchain-based computer program or smart contract, AMMs, that facilitate trades between cryptocurrencies without the use of intermediaries. Uniswap v3, the platform's latest version, debuted in 2021 on Ethereum blockchain and has since expanded to multiple additional networks. As of now, Uniswap v3 is the largest decentralized exchange by trading volume having processed over $1 trillion in transactions since its inception. With the V4 upgrade, the developer plans to expand the DEX's coin-swapping capabilities with the introduction of hooks and custom liquidity pools in a blog post on Tuesday. Uniswap Lab CEO Hayden Adams described hooks as plugins to customize how pools, swaps, fees, and LP positions interact. According to Adams, the new functionality could pave the way for things like on-chain limit orders and dynamic fees, Features that might be available on more traditional exchange platforms but are harder to implement in a blockchain setting where there are no intermediaries or centralized order books. Adams also indicated that the draft code for Uniswap v4 will introduce a performance improvements and fee reductions. Uniswap is permissionless, meaning anyone can create pools to facilitate the buying and selling of compatible crypto tokens. Under the v4 proposal, Adams says the network gas fees required to list new pools will be sliced by 99%. The proposed licensing model for Uniswap v4 is the business source license 1.1, the same license used by Uniswap v3. The license delays competitors from using Uniswap's code base to create their own applications as several popular decks use slightly modified versions of Uniswap's code base to power their systems. Um, and it's it's a step towards increased decentralization. And this is what we're looking for. This is the plan. Um, this is kind of what we what we want. And, um, and this is interesting. And that's why, like, how do you regulate an AMM? It's just code. How do you tell code that it has to protect investors? You know what I mean? They're interacting with the code. That's what they do. We're taking that on upon ourselves. I go around teaching at the very least 100 people about Bitcoin a month. Shout out to Millennium Live. We love you, man. God bless you. And you can see Bitcoin continued to flush itself down to the downside. Now we're down three bucks at 2.4%. I tell you, man, today is a tough day to trade. 
It's very sketchy. I, I can't can't place my, my my finger on it right now. Uh, we are trying to stop a bottom here. We'll take. Uh, we're trying to force the bottom here. We got this bullish divergence now, still like doubling up a little bit on the one minute time frame, but it doesn't look amazing. You got kind of a shoulder, a head, and a shoulder there that could further break us down. Right now, I'll be honest. Like uh, the market's a, kind of a mess right now. Um, what I look at is the bigger time frame right now. You know, one thing I'm looking at is the is the divergence here on the eight hour time frame, and the fact that we're in this falling wedge that should break to the upside. Like keeping it really simple, when the market does weird stuff, I mean, I just keep it simple. It felt like we broke from it, came back inside, hung out inside, and now we're likely to come here to the bottom of the channel at twenty five thousand two ninety seven. Then we could possibly get our move to the upside, and then as long as we don't break this channel, we'll be okay. So I'm seeing a bounce eventually. But it's taking its time, and they really don't want to let anyone see where the price action is going. You know, even Bookmap really hiding liquidity zones. It doesn't look amazing. It's not like we're getting like, oh, there's a bunch of red there. They do say there's more liquidity to the downside than to the upside. So if you just went on this idea, it says we're going down to 25K, 25,200. That's the area that I'm looking at too here for Bitcoin to drop further down. So that's why I was very weary. And also just playing it like it is. I mean, this is a rising wedge. Rising wedges break down 68% of the time. Right? Like so. And so that's what we see. I'm expecting this bounce because you're just very oversold in the 15 minute. I can't believe we haven't bounced yet. Right? You could say we're in a broadening finding wedge, I guess, and I could try to open it up. Try to curtail to the idea that we could, uh, or, you know, try to um, basically bend to the idea that we are in this bigger falling wedge. I'm going to stick to my trade, add to it if it continues to pump up and get above a previous resistance. At the end of the day, uh, I'm still bullish as long as Bitcoin can continue to not break this this downward trend line. We keep hitting this downward trend line, things are okay. Um, our bearish scenario is that we close a weekly candle below the 200 SMA and things start to get rocky, all right? So remember, I'm not a perma bull or a perma bear. I'm just looking at price action the way we need to look at it. Weekly is low, all right? We're starting to kind of, uh, you know, kind of push out here on this MACD, going to get a little less, but... Uh, you know, and, and I'm going to be honest with everyone here. Market looks sketchy today. Hard, hard to make a call. You know, I was able to make a call yesterday. It made sense. I saw a symmetrical triangle. We're in a very weird, like, market structure here. You know, like, we broke out of this beautiful little, you know, symmetrical triangle to the upside. We hit the target. Then we lost it all down. And also, we had bullish CPI data, which you thought would actually pump risk on assets. But um, it doesn't seem to be the case. So I would wait for the dust to settle here. Kind of sketchy times in, in Bitcoin. And at the end of the day, up, down, up, down, up, you are at the top of a channel. Do you come back down here to the bottom of the channel for a move to the upside? So only time will tell as Bitcoin struggles. I'd like to see the 15-minute oversold here get an aggressive bounce to the upside. That's what I'm playing, the fact that the 15-minute is going to bounce. So I'm keeping it really simple and just you know going for this bounce back to the top of the channel here for this falling wedge, right? If we lose this and bearishly retest it, then we're likely to fall to 25200 That's going to be our next level to watch. That would be a bearish retest on like the one of the seven-minute time frame, something like that, probably the one or even the five. So I'd watch the smaller time frame for a bit of a move here. But right now, the 15-minute is suggesting we can get a pump to the upside. So that's what I see happening for Bitcoin, um, you know, kind of sticking to it. And I don't know how we got to 12 o'clock today. Uh, I, I always wonder how that happens, how the, how the live stream just gets this crazy. But shout-out to everybody here on the live Appreciate each and every one of you. Wish we had won the trade early, but we did not. ETH is still early in the day, my friend. It is. Good morning, Zero. Hope you have a great day today, brother. Shout out to Zero Allegiance. Thank you for coming here, man. Can you please check Elmo ERC chart, please? Send in a TA or Super Chat, man. Do the right thing. Um, shout out to the gifted memberships. I appreciate you doing that, Creators Crypto. God bless you, brother. And shout out to the $200 Super Chat, my man. Breaking it down. The lone Super Chat of the day. One Super Chat on the day. Funny. Um, man, I love this channel. I learn so much every single day. Hey, man, I hope I'm doing my part. Some days even I wonder because I do it every single day. And as a human being, I know I'm not perfect. And I know I'm infallible. And I know I can make mistakes. But what I do is I try to be cons I, I What I am is I'm consistent. Would be lost without you, D-Dubs. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, everybody. And uh, I'll be back. And I'll be in the trading group. We'll be around. Um, if you're in the trading group, we can talk today. You know, break it down. But... Uh, Everyone, I love you all. Thank you so much for being here. Please comment, like, and subscribe. 
Hit the bell for notifications. You can find out when I post my next video. Remember, if you came to the channel, then you're already doing the right thing. Crypto is life. God bless you all. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, IMF recommended to raise rates so the countries can deflate their debts. Exactly. Looks like we're not going to raise rates tomorrow, but we'll find out. Sounds great, man. I'm going to get back to my busy day. Millennial love, we love you. Thanks for the show. Thank you. You're the best. Jay Bella, you're the best. Thanks for the show, Sam. Pleasure to be here, man. Thank you so much, man. I can tell, man. Your, your energy is great. Have a great rest of your day, brother. You too. Thank you, Sam, for another educational session. Stay safe and stay blessed. Yep. Thanks, man. And also, I'm going to be interviewing Gary Cardano. <laughs> I call him Gary Cardano. Gary Cardone. That's funny, man. I like calling him Gary Cardano, but he, I don't think he, I'm going to ask him if he likes Cardano, but um, I'm going to interview Gary Cardone, um, and I'm excited about that. That's at 1.30 today. It's not going to be live. We're going to pre-record it and edit it up for you, but get excited. We're going to have more and more people on the channel that have shown that they've done amazing things with their life, and we're going to talk about that, and that's another segment that we're going to bring to the Sam Price channel. Please go to the Sam Price channel and subscribe as soon as you can. I want to get to 500 subscribers. Uh, we only got 10 today. Come on. We can do better than that. Let's get, we have 500 people in the live. All 500 people should run to this channel and subscribe for me. Samuel James Price channel, where we're going to talk about real estate, development of mind, body, and soul. Um, we're going to break down all sorts of different things, maybe even near-death experiences. You name it. We're going to have a plethora of information here, all the different things that I'm interested into, which have everything to do with success. It's basically a success channel, similar to Valuetainment, where we're going to interview people from all around the world doing all different types of things. So please subscribe to this channel. As we're beginning to build it, and our first content will be coming out not too long from now. Uh, thank you for everything you do and always make it my day every single day. Shout out to Nobleman. I thought you would say Gary Gensler. Tweeted, Sammy. Oh, yeah, I'll put that out in the tweet, too. I haven't tweeted that in a long time. So, Bitcoin is mooning. You're funny, man. I mean, I'm expecting a bounce to the upside here. All the way back up to this area to 26250, and then I get to post that trade. So we'll see what happens. All right. We'll see what happens. I'm actually going to take a little nibble here and add to the trade a little bit, make it a little spicier. Add about 119 to the long. Now we got 265 in the trade. We're up a 1% almost at $2, and we'll see where this, where this goes. $3,922 USD in the trade, 15X long on Mex Global. Remember, Mex Global, join Mex C if you want to even dollar cost average or it's the best trading, you know, the best futures trading account. It just, it works great. I love it. Your orders get filled. It always works. So um, join the trading group today too if you want to see what we're looking at. We'll find a coin later on today that's going to help us pump to the upside. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. All right. I love you all. Thank you for being here. May God bless each and every one of you. Have a wonderful day and stay true to yourself. Stay true to your life and all will be well. Pray to God every single night, every single morning and every single middle of your day if you can and live in gratitude. Gratitude is the best attitude you can have. If you stay grateful every single moment of your life, it's only going to get better every single day. I, 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 I can promise you that, that gratitude will add to your life. So everyone, thank you for being here. I'll see you tomorrow on my next live stream and I appreciate each and every one of you. Big sip of water before we get out of here. And know that I live in love and love you too. This is my dad's tie, man, representing my pops. Had to get that collar inside of the vest. Didn't notice that, but um, thank you so much for everyone. Gratitude, 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 gratitude. You can, you will, you are the best. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you all. <laughs>